I'd like to start out today just giving a little bit of a review of what all the different features of the GUI are. So Star C Plus is broken into four main windows. Firstly, you have your main tree window here. This is where all your data will be input and all your reports created, all your scenes, any of your meshing and post-processing will all be created here. All those objects are handled within the tree. In this main window here, you'll have your scenes, whether it be a scene that you can rotate or zoom. You'll have residuals, in which you can uh, look at, you know, or any plots that you have, so CP plots. And finally, you have any of your scalar scenes uh, that you create. So these are visualizations of the model you're simulating. Next, we have our output window. Now, this output window is going to be your traditional feedback for the code. So if there are any errors or the residuals, as you can see here, the numerical of the text is output here. And finally, we have our properties window. Now, this properties window will allow you to interact with the code. So whenever you click on an object, you'll see that it has properties that can be modified. So the final window, which is by default hidden, is the servers window. And if you select the servers window, you'll see that we have, in the servers tab, you'll see all the servers that are running on your local machine. So you can see here, this is the server that actually this simulation is running. See the host, see the port number it's through, and what file it's looking for, and what clients are connected to it. So you could have multiple clients connected to the server. You'd be able to see that information here. So that's the main layout of StarCM Plus. What we'll look at in the next video is how to interact with the tree and all the different operations within the tree. Now that we've reviewed the windows, in StarCM Plus, let's look at how to interact with a tree. You'll see that the tree is made up of a series of folders. Inside of each one of these folders are objects. So you'll see within the geometry folder, there are 3D CAD models, which you can create new with a right click. And there are parts, so you'll see when you import geometry from a CAD file as parts, you'll see all those parts get created here. You'll see as we go in, each one has a handle. This handle is a plus sign. In Linux, it's a little turn arrow key. And as you expand, you'll see the different levels that we have. So in the geometry folder, you have a part. And within a specific part, for instance, the pressure outlet, we have a singular surface. And as you go through and set up more and more complicated simulations, you'll see this tree grow. Now you'll also see these same parts referenced down below. So this pressure boundary within parts is sent down to the pressure boundary down in the region. And these two are connected to each other through kind of the process pipeline that we have. So when you change anything up on the top, for instance, you translate or you transform this component up top, all of that data will be passed down into the CFD definition or the regional definition of the surface. So as you expand, you'll see that we have continua, which define your mesh and your physics. You'll see your region, which define all your computational regions, so anything that you want to solve on, whether it be just a singular fluid region or a fluid region and a solid region to handle a conjugate heat transfer problem. Below that, you'll have your derived parts. And this is anything that you'll derive from the mesh or from the solutions. For instance, uh, plane sections or point probes or streamlines, anything that you would do with a traditional post-processing tool. Below that, you have your solvers. And this is some of the extra settings that you'll see uh, when you're running a transient solution or steady state solution. Any extra under relaxations or factors or CFL numbers that you'll find will be under the solvers tab. Stopping criteria are what tells Star C Plus to stop or when a solution can be judged as converged. For instance, a uh, solving criteria could be maximum steps by default or it could be the result of a report. So we can actually use a report as a stopping criteria. So you'll see below we have reports which return a singular value, for instance, a lift or a drag, or in this case, a torque. When you double click, you'll return a singular value. When you right click, you can create extra operations from it. So you can do a monitor, a plot, or just an annotation. So you'll notice with Star CCM Plus, your predominant interaction will be to select and modify properties, or to create new, you'll do a right click. And as you go down the rest of the tree, you'll see we have monitors, which will monitor the simulation. You have plots, which will show whether it be a CP, or in this case, we have a residual plot. Finally, you have all the scenes that you can create, whether it be a geometry scene to show the geometry, or this scalar scene that I have here showing the scalars. And the final 
two windows that we have here are the volume mesh representation all the way through your geometry representation. And you'll see as you build your simulation, when you start out and you go to your initial surface, you wrap the geometry or you just remesh the geometry. All of these representations will be maintained so that way you can go through and inquire into each representation at any time during the simulation. And lastly, we have our tools. These are the extra data sets that you can input or create using StarCM Plus. And anything from a field function to a simple layout to a view to importing tables or exporting tables. All of those operations will be found down in tools. So that's the predominant function of all the, uh, all the objects in the tree. And you'll see through usage that the tree can be very, very useful and a very straightforward flow path for your simulation needs. Thank you.